India recorded over 3 lakh cases for the second straight day on Friday, clocking uh, 3 lakh 32,730 cases in the last 24 hours. The Union Health Ministry has uh, informed us. With this, India's trend of registering the world's highest daily tally continues. Amidst this, the Supreme Court today took a uh, dim view of uh, senior counsel, imputing motives to judges and justices of India in particular for registering a Suomoto case on COVID-19 related issues. It uh, therefore said it will issue notice on uh, four issues, which is supply of oxygen, supply of essential drugs, method and manner of vaccination and the power to uh, declare a lockdown. Apart from uh, the four issues mentioned, the court also asked the central government to place before it a national plan for dealing with issues arising out of uh, the pandemic. And obviously, we have been trying uh, to get you a bit of information from all across the country where uh, people have been, uh, you know, finding it very difficult to get oxygen. Prominent hospitals in the capital city, including Sargangaram Hospital, Max Super Specialty Hospital, all of them have uh, been making SOS calls to uh, the government on this uh, very grim situation. Three lakh plus cases once again, second day on the trot in India. Dr. Vinay Agarwal, former president of Indian Medical Association, member of MCI, joins us on the program. Dr. Anil Bansal, CMO, NDMC, former joint secretary of IMA. Uh, former uh, chairman of anti-quacker cell of uh, Delhi Medical Council also joins us. Dr. Vivek Gupta, senior cardiologist, uh, cardiologist uh, in the Prastha Apollo Hospital also joins us on uh, this very important discussion. And uh, let me in fact take my question first up uh, to Dr. Vivek Gupta. Dr. Gupta, if you can hear me, sir. Dr. Gupta, if you can hear me, sir. Dr. Gupta, if you're there with us. Okay, Dr. Bansal, if you can hear me, sir. Yeah. Yes. Dr. Bansal, your thoughts on what's going on. Uh, oxygen is uh, found wanting. The Prime Minister just chaired a very important meeting with the Chief Ministers of uh, all the states which have been uh, catastrophically been hit by this uh, mayhem. Your thoughts on what's gone wrong so far and how do we fix it? And this is a very important uh, program. Uh, country is facing a big problem. Almost whole of the country is having shortage of oxygen, medicines, and beds. Uh, oxygen is not the only thing when the beds are not available to the patient. Uh, for example, if I become ill today, I will not be able to get a bed in any of the uh, hospitals. So if uh, I will be facing such a problem, so what will happen to the common man or the normal man, normal population? The main thing is the government has started reacting very late. Everybody knew that this virus will be coming, second wave will be very, very severe as it has happened in England and America. But in India, we were not taking it seriously and uh, the concrete plannings were not there. Yeah. Suddenly, when the uh, cases started rising up to 3 lakhs or 3.5 lakh, uh, then the government became active. Uh, before that, everybody knew from the, this is a viral fever, viral uh, disease, it goes of its own. You have to take symptomatic treatment. You have to use the COVID behavior. Uh, COVID chronic uh, behavior is hand sanitization, keeping a distance of uh, minimum two yards and uh, avoiding the gatherings. But the main thing, everything was going on except the gatherings. The government, uh, all parties, government, the religious leaders, they were not implementing the social distancing. Mm. They were having a crowd of more than few lakh people every day. Where uh, people were violating all the rules and regulations. So all these things has created such a that virus suddenly started increasing and now it is out. Hmm, okay. Uh, provide the beds and the other things can be discussed later on. But at present, we have to uh, follow that the patients, uh, persons are getting oxygen in the house. If they are beds are not available, oxygen patients should be given treatment. And in, uh, during this time, what is happening? Because of the information technology, WhatsApp, etc., a lot of treatments are being circulated, and people are following it, whether they inquire or not. And sometimes those medicines can give a uh, reaction, or they can give a side effect. So people have to consult their con the doctor. And uh, this is a pandemic condition. If people will not be getting proper advice, the condition may deteriorate also. All right, we have a caller. Salab Saran is giving us a call from Delhi. Salab, what's your question? Salab? 
Okay, not sure if Salab is there with us. We have another caller. Sanjeev is with us from New Delhi. Sanjeev, what's your question? Go ahead. Yeah, hi. My question is that I have taken uh, a COVID shield vaccination on 16th of March. Hello. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Some disturbance yeah, there. So yeah. I have taken COVID shield on 16th of March. Is it okay if I take a vaccine vaccination instead of COVID shield? So you're saying that you have taken COVID shield and uh, you want to change the vaccination now. You want to change the vaccine. Is that what you're saying, Sanjeev? Can I take that as co-vaccine or do I have to stick to COVID shield? All right, let me take that question to Dr. Uh, uh, Vivek Gupta. Dr. Gupta, we have a caller, Sanjeev, who's giving us a call from Delhi. He says that he's taken COVID shield. Uh, can the second dose be of Covaxin? I think not. No, no, no. You see, there have been so many vaccines now. We know that India has already approved other vaccines other than Covaxin and COVID shield. Once you have taken one vaccine, whether it is COVID shield or Covaxin, the second booster dose has to be the same. The reason is that antibodies which are developed because all the technologies are different. Covid shield is using a chimpanzee virus, vector virus, where they are putting the spike protein on the top and then they are inoculating. While the Covaxin is actually a killed virus, which is uh, in the inactivated virus, uh, actually a virus, coronavirus. So the, both the technologies are different. You have to have the stick the same vaccine. Coming on to the point which I want to point regarding the oxygen supply, this is very important problem. We are facing a doctor because a lot of patients are running around or different hospitals including Apollo hospital and many other hospital patients are actually have died just looking for oxygen. What is the solution? The solution would be, I have told also on other channels in the news as well, that uh, first of all all the patients, I am telling you through this uh, channel also, all the patients who are getting infected and they still do not require oxygen, early treatment is very important. I have myself, my relations have people are known that, okay, mild fever, I am not COVID. I don't want to test. I don't want to go for testing. Even if they are not tested, at least start antiviral medicine in the course in consultation with your local physicians. This will going to help because if you start a treatment on day one or, or else you start in day seven, there is a large difference. The virus has already gone inside. It is started uh, replicating fast. It has gone into the lungs. Start treatment and not at day one, at least at day two. I would imagine, and I would say now, although remdesivir is still in huge demand and it's not, not available, Fabipiravir, which is an oral uh, antiviral medicine, should be given in day two now because I would like to change the protocol. You see, you have to treat, you have to dance according to the need tune of the society. The demand is like this that we don't want the patient to gas for oxygen. If we can control in the first week, the patient will not go into second stage. A lot of patients keep waiting for consultation, RT-PCR test or antigen test or this and that. If they feel some viral fever, they don't start treatment. If we start treatment day two, I may be differing from the protocols which have been set by uh, by other agencies that Trivaparavir should be given only after day five. That is why we are facing problem. You see, it could be a simple viral fever which is not being treated well or treated initially. I say Ivermectin on day two along with Trivaparavir. Trivaparavir actually production has to be increased even Trivaparavir is not available at many places. Okay. But this is oral medicine. I'm sure that... So hold on to your thought. Now, right, Dr. Gupta, hold on to your thought. We have a caller. LV Srinivasan is calling us from Bangalore from the Red Cross Society. Let's listen into what he has to ask. Srinivasan, go ahead. Good afternoon, uh, doctors and good afternoon, sir. Uh, my thing is actually we did some uh, research here and we found out that the uh, Indian Council of Scientific Research at Dehradun with their counterparts at Durgapur have actually made a prototype, a working prototype of oxygen generator which uh, generates oxygen at 500 liters per minute and it is the technology uh, can be given to all the states free of cost it requires only 100 square meters and it can be uh, installed within two to three days i uh, what we request the government through you is if they, all the governments can take up this technology from them and put it it will be a great help to everybody thank you so much Okay, that's a very good suggestion. I'll definitely uh, would want a reaction from our panelists. Ramachandran is also calling us from Kerala. Ramachandran is giving us a call from uh, Kerala at this point in time. Uh, Ramachandran, go ahead. All right, Salab Saran uh, is uh, back with us. Salab, we had lost your uh, connection in the middle. Please ask, what's your question? Yeah, hi, Vineet. Uh, my name is Salab. And uh, my question. 
Sala, please mute your television. We can hear our feedback. Please mute your television and then ask the question. Yeah, Vineet, uh, my question is, uh, Vineet, are you there? Sala, I'm very much here. Please mute your television. Yeah, Vineet. So, uh, my concern is that what, what happened in just about 20, 15, 20 days time, uh, that, you know, table is completely turned aside. If you have been tracking uh, the media for last six, eight months time, first Sushant Singh Rajput was playing across the media. Then you had China issue on the media. Then you had, you know, uh, this, uh, <coughs> this uh, pharma irritation was on the media. There was no news of coronavirus, as if everything was under control. And the government was, you know, completely silent on that. What happened? In just 15 days' time, completely things have turned up, upside down. Why was it coronavirus? Has it been injected from the, from the heaven? What could be the reason? Can you, can, you, can you please analyze this part? This is what is not able to understand. Hmm, okay. Well, you have a point over there. Uh, let me, in fact, take this question uh, to our panelists and uh, try and figure out you know, what uh, you know, we can ascertain from uh, the observation that you have made. Dr. Agarwal, uh, we have a caller who's uh, asked a very interesting question. He says that uh, you know, it did not take for the COVID-19 uh, second wave or the surge uh, uh, you know, more than 15 days to wreak havoc across the nation. Why is that so? And uh, how can this be possible in such a short span of time? Please unmute yourself, sir. Dr. Agarwal? See, I think, I think both the things are totally different. Mm. The second wave, uh, it is anticipated that it will take two, three, minimum two, three weeks more. There is no doubt about it. These are the, this is what the experts are saying. They are talking about mid of May and then it will decline. Now, if it, it can go, if we vaccinate all, that's a different thing. We, it is not possible in a country like India to vaccinate everybody in 15 days. And particularly uh, in, in midst of a pandemic. Now, you see, same hospitals are vaccin doing vaccinations and same hospitals are treating COVID. It's becoming very, very difficult to maintain both the things simultaneously. And COVID has come like a disaster. It's, I mean, I rightly said by Supreme Court today, it's a medical emergency in the country. And uh, which was neglected for quite some time. And now suddenly in the last three, four year, days, everybody is now seems to be very active. You just imagine the first and foremost thing which is required in this, if a hospitalization is required, is need of oxygen. And we have not been able to provide oxygen even to bigger hospitals, even to smaller hospitals, even to mid-sized mid hospitals, everywhere. Now, it's not, it's not a deficiency at one place. It is a deficiency across the country. This is, speaks about the planning. Doctors can work, doctors can treat, doctors can kill themselves in, in the, performing their duties, but simultaneously, logistics has to be provided by the government and this is actually in the form of like uh, rightly said by dr vivek oxygen is a must medicines are a must now uh, instead of providing medicines if we start debating a medicine what is required or not required it is creating confusion both in the minds of medical uh, uh, luminary and simultaneously public now this is what is a wrong practice which the ministry of health has started doing it i personally feel they all should now concentrate only on one thing, number one, in the next three or four days, as per the directive of various high courts, and now today it's off to free port, oxygen should be made available. It mm. should be made available. You just imagine Gangaram Hospital, Max, Max Hospital, Dool Hospital, which has 600 beds of COVID. If they have oxygen for two hours or three hours, what is going to be the situation uh, all over? And the small hospitals which are not even in the site of administrators. I run a 50 bedded hospital. I have 40 patients of COVID. Now my oxygen is just for every hour. I am borrowing oxygen from somewhere or the other. That's a kind of a situation we are doing. It has become that besides a doctor, I am becoming a, a person who is practically requesting many emotions that give me some cylinder, give me some oxygen, give me something because otherwise the patient will die. Now this is a situation which has to be dealt with formally by the government and I personally feel in the last one week, government has totally failed, whether it is the central government or the state government. And it is not a time for state governments to make it an interstate issue. Hmm. The oxygen trucks have been stopped at the border. Now but that's a kind of a very bad situation which is happening today. Now oxygen is there, uh, vans are there, 
but the police of one uh, state and other police are struggling to get it clear. Now you are playing with the lives of the uh, uh, person you have already played in the form of uh, holding election. You have already play, played in the form of doing all uh, religious, those kind of a thing. You have already played making it a political inter-state issues. Now, both the, I, I will blame both central government and the state government are not doing their job properly. I personally will. I, and hats off to our uh, prime minister. Believe me, if one person who has taken the challenge is taken up himself, nowhere in the uh, globe it is seen that the prime minister is looking for and organizing provision of cylinders, oxygen, seeing provision of medicine, hmm. seeing that vaccine should be made available. Now that's a kind of, on one side I am appreciative of his effort, but simultaneously, please, please and please don't make it an interstate issue. Don't make it a political issue. Hmm. A, 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 a persons are dying across party lines. But but the fact Whether of it all right. Any party. It Abs is Bimari is not coming to one party or I, I other party. I completely yesterday only. I completely agree with all you. All parties are uh, seen uh, unfortunate deaths of uh, those persons. So let us forget about parties. Let us forget about political things. Let us start and the power of political power in this country is so much. Religious power in this country is so much. If political and religious things join together, they can really provide everything possible. Beds they can provide, they can provide oxygen, they can provide free services, they can do everything. So my request to this country, to this countryman, to this, number two, please have patience. So citizens don't get panic. Your, your panic is going to not uh, help us. Uh, I mean, any person now who has pulse oximeter is sees that 93, 94, it's coming, coming down, I want a feature. Please don't be panic. Don't okay. be panic. Okay, we have a caller. We and have, we, we, we have a caller, sir. One sec, one second, sir. So one second. We have a caller. Nagarajan is giving us a call from uh, Bangalore at this point in time. One second, sir. Nagarajan is giving us a call. We should also see that the government should take. So one second, sir. Doctor, one second, sir. Nagarajan is giving us a call from Bangalore. Nagarajan, what's your question? Please be louder, Nagarajan. Please um, be louder. You're on national TV. Be louder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, can, uh, can I call it from uh, the other phone? This is not. No, there is. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can we do this? Yeah, yeah. Number 011. 011 613 62050. Okay. 13620. Now, this phone is. Uh, some problem is there. Yeah. Okay, okay, Nagarajan, I, I, I can't hear what you're saying. Yeah. Nagarajan, please come back. Come back with the with, with call again. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't hear you. Dr. Gupta, can you hear me? Okay, Dr. Gupta, can you hear me? Okay, there seems to be a problem with the connection. We'll try and reestablish that momentarily. But folks, the uh, crisis uh, is uh, still looming large. The oxygen supply is hindered. Interstate politics and bureaucracy and red tapeism is coming in the way of uh, you know lives being saved. 25 people at the Sar Gangaram Hospital have died, not necessarily because of the lack of oxygen, but because of uh, the virulence of this virus and the fact that the strain on our medical apparatus as well as our facilities has never been as palpable and as aggressive and as vociferous as it is today. We will uh, try and answer all your queries. You see that number flashing on your screen. Give us a call on that number and uh, we will uh, try and address your uh, worry or your apprehension. Uh, let me in fact go back to Dr. Gupta. Dr. Gupta, are you able to hear me? Dr. Gupta, are you able to hear me? Okay, uh, what we're gonna do at this point in time, folks, uh, we will, uh, try and re-establish that connection but uh, we'll get into a uh, breaking news coming in well the chairman of Sargangaram hospital has now come out and clarified on the deaths he said and i quote false reports that uh, they died due to the lack of oxygen when uh, oxygen pressure was lowered in icu beds we gave patients uh, oxygen manually and uh, didn't let anyone die without oxygen. And INX has told us that after getting state government's uh, NOC, they'll supply nine to 10,000 cubic meters of oxygen on a daily basis. So once again, reports that came out of Gangaram that 25 critical patients died of the lack of, well, because of lack of oxygen is absolutely unfounded. These were serious 
ill patients who died because of complications owing to COVID-19. And this is good news. If Gangaram has clarified, the chairman has clarified that they will be getting nine to 10,000 uh, liters of uh, oxygen on uh, a daily basis. And manual uh, oxygen was given to patients whose oxygen levels went down and there have been no deaths so far in Gangaram due to the lack or uh, the less supply of uh, O2 cylinders. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.